Good evening, Paul Mario. Fakarobalahiatu. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Daily Examiner. This is Sunday night. It is absolutely my pleasure to welcome you all in to come in and have a bit of a chit chat. We're here tonight to have a bit of a discussion with young people. Yes, I know sometimes people say that I'm young, but those people are generally not that young. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how we can roll into it and have a bit of fun. So we do. There are some young people who do have a great deal of benefit to the community, those who are actually fighting for our all of our people as well, and we need to gain the strength and the wisdom of that group. First and foremost, let me introduce my co-host for this evening. Welcome to Liao Tilsley. Liao, good to see you. Good to see you. Tell us, Elliot. Young oh, awesome, Elliot. Awesome, awesome. Young Elliot, hey, <laughs> awesome. Uh, so what this is, this is going to be a bit of a discussion. Yeah. We're going to have a bit of a talano, a bit of a korero. Please feel free to throw in any of your comments in there, throw in any sort of questions, all right? We'll make sure that they are being heard. Uh, one of the big things, of course, is that tonight was quite impromptu. One of the great things about that means that you'll be able to ask away, and I'm sure we'll be able to get some chats. And first and foremost, or secondly, I'd like to introduce one of our panel members, welcoming to Shasta 
Tilsley, Shasta, how are you? Hello, hello. Thank you for thank you so much for having me a part of this uh, little talk, this little chit chat that we have, Mr. Young Elliot over here, and my beautiful <laughs> mum. Um, it's a awesome. you know real honour to be able to just you know have a little discussion about um you know just the challenges that the youth of today go through, and also um, answering a couple of questions as to what um, really stands for. Yeah, so thanks for having me on board. Awesome. Oh, excellent, excellent. And introducing from the south, not the deep south, but the south, Rebecca. Rebecca, Wamai, how are yeah. you? Hey, uh, good, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's so awesome to be here. Um, I'm so excited to talk to you guys about what your interests are and what we can do to help you. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, Rebecca, could you give us a, just a little bit of brief bio on you, who you are, you know, roughly where you are, and, and just a little bit of that? Yes, yes. So um, I'm Rebecca Young Wai. I live um, in the Manawatu, down two hours from the capital, Wellington. And I, um, yeah, at the moment I don't have a job, um, but I am uh, here to volunteer. I love volunteering with anything that I can do. And so it's really awesome just to be here. Um, I've got uh, six siblings and um, we're all in the same boat, more or less. And um, yeah, so I, I'm just here. I love to be able to help um, wherever i can so i'm um, excited to share with you guys see what you guys like and um yeah awesome awesome so so i have heard that the tilsley tribe is the name of your group that's coming up and i am curious what is the overall idea of it and and what's been going on with that group now Liao, I'll, I'll put you in here mm. as well because i know that yeah. you're a part of this as well yeah did you want to start with me? <laughs> yeah, let me start with you. Uh, I, so originally, um, what what actually happened was um, I I have got up my own uh, Facebook group called the Mama Bear Project, and uh, quite a few um, mothers, you know, up or parents uh, are on there. And one of them in particular had written a post about how her and her son uh, were just weeping that day because he could no longer do sport. And so uh, from that point on, I just, I read it to my boys and I said, this is what it's like right now. Um, do you, how, how do you feel about starting your own group? And they were all three of them, uh, were just amazingly keen about it. So that, that, that's basically how it was created. Incredible that they were all willing to step up to this. But I'll, I won't oh, take awesome. the light off this. The boys can, um, Shasta can continue with that. No, awesome. So Shasta, yeah, what is it? What is it that you're wanting? What's the goal here? What do you want to sort of bring into this? Yeah, so I'm um, just carrying on from what my mom said. Uh, she told us about this and about how one kid was like real, you know, in distress. And for me, and especially my brothers as well, like we kind of really felt for that kid, and we're like, hey, look, uh, we were once in that situation. No. Which means that there's definitely a lot of kids out there, you know. So I guess the the ideal aim and the goal that um, that we have for this group is is just to be able to connect all these all these teenagers and all these uh, young teens, all these children, just be able to connect them because the worst thing that they could ever feel at this age is just being alone, and like uh, we you know we just hate that you know we we hate it sucks that these kids feel that way at the moment. Um, so that's definitely a direction that we want to take this group into is um, just being able to connect the families together. Mm. And um, so far we have been, which is like amazing. It's, you know, it's just amazing to see that um, a lot of people are on board with this and showing their support and just um, being able to connect, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah, awesome, awesome. And Rebecca, I'm also going to ask you for that, but also going to add to it, how has the group been going and and what's been going on with it so far? Yeah, no, um, uh, the group's been going well. It's gained um, a lot of um, people who want to join the group. Um, so far, we haven't really got too much started up, but I think we have a lot in plan um, that we vision for uh, to happen. You know, group activities, just joining the community together and just getting uh, children who are like-minded and who are going through the strange same struggles to uh, just get together to um, enjoy each other's company and be able to play sports that they can't play anymore in schools. 
And um, yeah, it's just um, something that, you know, I think the Tilsley boys and me and my sister, Hannah, we just love to bring community together and, and get kids um, interacting with each other again, you know, like it used to be back in the old days. <laughs> But yeah, so it will be nice to um, see that happen at some point soon. So hopefully it will start shortly. Oh, awesome. Oh, that sounds great. Sounds great. Now, I did want to ask a few things. Some of the, I'm going to dive straight into maybe some controversial topics. My first one that I, something that myself and Liao that we've worked with as well uh, in a professional capacity is the idea around suicide. And in, in specific here, we're talking about youth suicide. Uh, we know that New Zealand is one of the highest uh, in terms of youth suicide in the OECD. It hasn't really changed much. We've got some ruthless statistics out on that. What are your thoughts around that suicidality within our young people? And I'll, I'll add to that. We also had the report coming out from Simon Thornley and his group about how from the first lockdown to the last lockdown, there's been a 40% increase in parasuicidality, which means self-harm or suicidal behavior, which has ended up in hospitalization. What are your thoughts around that, I, that, that youth suicide in general that New Zealand seems to really struggle with, uh, and also in the context of the lockdowns about that? Do you guys have any thoughts about that? I'll throw it open to, let's have a, actually, Rebecca, we, we start with Shasta next. Rebecca, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I, I think it's absolutely horrible. I mean, I, I can understand, you know, um, they're just feeling so left out, the kids um, in this day and age, because, you know, there are two uh, spectrums at the moment. You know, you you have to either be vaccinated or unvaccinated and and you can't join the um, vaccinated people, you know, and the kids are just feeling so alone now and they can't go to any other sports they can't go outside they can't go to the movies they can't go swimming to the pools with their friends and they're just so uh, isolated at their own home and even when they do go to school they're still isolated from their friends you know that they had and so um it's i mean it's absolutely horrible what's going on and um that's something you know that would be really great to just uh be a light to those kids who are struggling right now mm, no, absolutely it's just that we do that is actually a really good point we know that some kids, there's been some argument about whether kids need to be excluded or not. Auckland Rugby League Union had put out one saying that 5 to 11 year olds had to be mandated or they'd be excluded. Then that was amended. They changed that and then they went back to recommended, probably because of how the policies and laws are going there. What are, your, what are you observing uh, in terms of the young community and their struggles within the, uh, the new lockdown environment? Uh, yeah, so I'm glad you brought up sports because um, I would say sports for me growing up was a real big deal. Um, if anything, it was a huge part of my identity, you know. So I used to love playing basketball. I still do. And um, I, I remember I just used to go after school every day to the same place in Newland and just play basketball, you know. And the worst thing is, is that for these young teens, for these kids, sports could be one of the biggest parts of their life, you know whether it's rugby, whether it's netball, volleyball, like it doesn't matter what sport it is. It's just, it's where they feel their identity comes from. And then when that is taken away from them, you know, they, they feel lost as a, as a person, as an individual, you know, they, they have no more direction in life. They're like, oh man. And what it does is it puts them in, in an isolated space in their mind. You know, it, it keeps them quite alone. And that is one of the worst things that could happen to a kid, you know? And mm. what we want to do is we want to, uh, you know, bring bring back initiatives and um, bring back coaches and, and all these things that allow these kids to once again explore the sports that they just lost. Um, because, you know, let's be honest, it's just ridiculous, you know, the, just this whole thing. And unfortunately, like, kids, when they lose their identity, they, they lose their path and their purpose, or they feel they have. And what that does is it just keeps them in quite a, a sad place. So what, that's exactly what we want to tackle as a group. Mm. We'll, we'll try our best. It's just allowing these kids to understand that they're not alone. There's alternatives up there. And um, like, if anything, it's, it's quite good that we've had a lot of people step forward and say, hey, look, we can uh, play some sports up in the afternoon at the park, you know, all these things. And that's exactly what we want to, what we want to encourage, you know, just to allow mm. these kids to really feel like they, they have an identity that they can um, play these sports, they can get real good at it, 
you know, one day be like Dan Carter or like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, you know, just stuff like that. And that's what we want to push, you know. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Liao, yeah, that's a really good point too, especially about Mm -hmm. that the kids being able to play and also having an identity. I, mm-hmm. I'll even push you just for a little bit extra there, which is five to elevens, yeah, they're not they're not allowed to be touched. They they can play unvaxxed or whatever and they won't be attacked. My understanding, however, is, is that twelve year olds end up actually no go. If they are not vaxxed then they'll be excluded. Mm-hmm. They'll be kept away from sports. Is that correct? And what are your thoughts around that? Because of course, you know, we talk about five eleven uh, uh, psychologically and neurologically, that 12 and up stage is still really important for uh, our children, our young people's development. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so I I feel like they're still developing at this point. So like Shasta said, uh, they're still understanding their identity. And when that's been taken away from them, you, uh, you start to get uh, a lot more... Um, psychological problems that they experience both at home and at school and also the pressure uh, they've been taught at school quite a lot about not you know bullying and so they would actually be bullied if they if they feel like they're um, they're not the same as other children and uh, so you've got a lot of these issues that are, are coming up which these the when the kids aren't meant to deal with this kind of thing they're supposed to enjoy their childhood you know go on bikes not have to worry about these things but this is exactly what they're having to deal with and so uh, this kind of group you know there are so many great ideas that that the team have been thinking about um but you know they're they're not going to be the answer to everything and i i feel like um uh, you know lots of communities need to start thinking about what do we do with our children you know, this is a really good stepping stone for our young people to start. Hey, how do we do this? How do we work together? But also, it needs the the responsibility does need to come from higher. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well said. Well said. And, and just to put it out there, and I do want to sort of hear what you guys think about. Uh, uh, what would you say are some of the big issues of young people at the moment? And I wouldn't mind seeing, just if you, there's a whole raft, you know, uh, job-wise, more study, peer pressure, sexualization, LGBTQIA+, plus, uh, you know, authoritarianism, all of that. I wouldn't mind hearing, just from yourselves, what you think maybe three highlight issues that you guys sort of want to have a look at. Because I'm, I'm curious from your point of view as to what you think are, are probably three that you think you'll focus on at least from this group, at least for the start part. So, Shasta, what do you think? What are three things that you really want to sort of focus on? Um, so, just to clarify, it's just some problems, like three main problems that uh, youth and young teens go through. Is, is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so, like I said before, the first is, I would say, is definitely identity. And that is along with purpose as well. Uh, because, you know, we're in the day and age where so many opportunities out there it's hard to choose what is the right one so like you know go and join the police or become a doctor there's like and the thing is everything's available at the, you know, for you to use so i think it's quite hard for kids to definitely find their identity themselves their purpose, like their passions just because there's so much available which is not necessarily bad you know, because you know, it's, it's available for them but um, I think that's something that could definitely be talked about a lot more is, you know, just sitting someone down and being like, hey, look, what do you enjoy doing? Do you like working with people? Do you not like working with people? You know, these things and, and really explore these ideas with these young teens. Um, and also at the same time, it's okay not to know what, what you want to do. Well, I didn't really know. I'm just kind of just going with the flow, just doing what I feel like. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it, you know, so it's, it, it, you know, it's okay to not have um, an idea at the moment, especially if you're a lot younger. Uh, so that is that is one of the main ones I believe. You know, we should um, talk about more. You know, have mm. a bit more support. For. It's yeah, just no, fair enough. yeah, these these mm. kids with their sense of direction, purpose, and belonging. Um, another issue. 
Let's think about this one. Yeah, so so there was identity. Sorry, I'm back. I just had to think about it. <laughs> I understand. Um, I really think that, uh, like like I said, belonging before, just allowing these uh, kids to be able to uh, create and establish good friendships. You know, I think that uh, when when you surround yourself with like minded people, with uh, people that share the same interests as you, you know, you can go a lot a lot far. far enough, you know? um, and like I said before, you know, with these teenagers feeling quite alone, and isolated, that it's it's a real big problem because they're not able to, you know, share good memories with people if they're alone. And um, I think that's another real good idea and and thing that we can tackle as you know, as admins of this group uh, just definitely be able to provide kind of a sense of family with these these children mm. yeah and um it's too all right <laughs> two it's fine Dude, Thank you, fine. Yeah, because, because like, in actual fact that's actually quite a a, a powerful strong I think, substance yeah i as think well. they're quite big yeah yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that one around direction, of course, you know, I mean, man, honestly, you, you get to 30, 40, 50, 60, man, hey, some of us still don't have that direction. And, and oh, you're still yeah, 21, Elliot. <laughs> hey, 21, that's right, bro. That's right. I'm glad you recognize, hey. Eh? <laughs> uh, the, the fact is, I think some of the most interesting 40 year olds still have no idea really what they're doing. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's actually from a song that I used to love as well, <laughs> which you probably wouldn't have heard of ever. That's fine. Uh, Rebecca, what about yourself? What are some of the, the big issues that, that you see out there? Yeah, I, I see a lot of peer pressure um, from other teenagers to the, um, their friends. Just, you know, they're doing this, so the other kids want to do that too, but they're not, you know, they're either not allowed or they feel wrong about it, but they go do it anyway. And there's just a lot of peer pressure out there for so many kids. I know I went through that when I was younger, you know, the peer pressure of wanting to do this and wanting to do that and go there and there. But it's so different now, you know, you have to um, be vaccinated to do any of that stuff. So the peer pressure is even stronger now, you know, you're going to go do it. And um, that's such a big one in this day and age is um, the even the five year olds, you know, they can be peer pressured as well. And I just think that's like, um, you know, that's a real struggle for kids um, these days. Um, oh, now, now I'm in Shasta's position. I can't quite remember. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got two out. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to try and find another one. Um, but, well, to be honest, I agree with Shasta on the identity one as well. Um, it's hard to find your identity at the moment. I mean, even I mean, it took me until last year to figure out what I wanted to do, and then I couldn't do it anymore after that. After once it came to this year, but um, it's it's such a difficult thing to choose what you want to do, and I feel like uh, kids can have such a struggle doing that because they feel like they're supposed to be so great and they're supposed to be these awesome people, which they are, obviously but they feel like they're supposed to be better than everybody expects them to be, you know? And so mm. uh, it's such a big thing. Identity is, um, and it's such a struggle uh, with so many kids. And even with me at age of 21, I was still struggling with my identity. <laughs> but yeah. You know what? Let, let me go, let me pierce that one even deeper. And I want to want to get your guys take on this uh, from five years old, as of last year, from five years old, Teachers are to start embedding gender ideology into their lessons. Therefore, sort of pushing that quiet idea of a boy is not a girl and a girl is not a boy, but rather on a sliding spectrum that they can choose at any time that they want. So this is going on. Now, this will start going in from five-year-old children and up. This is what's being pushed upon them. Now, when you, you're, you're talking about gender and you've noted about jobs and activities that you might want to do and that attaches to to who you are what are your thoughts in terms of pushing pronouns pushing gender ideologies onto children as young as five years old and even enabling them to start to choose whatever gender they want to be and perhaps even you know penis removal double massive degrees starting that journey what are your thoughts here and uh, we'll get Leah to jump in here as well but Rebecca what are your thoughts on that yeah that's such a um, hard one sometimes because you can get so much um 
hateful saying something about this, but um, I, I mean, I absolutely don't think it's right uh, for for push that on such young people at such a young age. You know, they can't decide quite yet. You know, they haven't they they haven't fully you know grown into what they want to be. And so, if they start doing that at such a young age, and teachers and parents are pushing that on them. It's like, what if they get to, you know, they start doing this at five and what if they get to 17, 18 and they're like, actually, I really regret my decision, you know, because they haven't actually decided fully what they even want to do in life. They're only five years old. So it's, um, it's, I think it's wrong to be pushing that on children at that age. Right. Oh, thank you so much. Shasta, what are your thoughts there? Um, I definitely, the, the one thing I disagree with, yeah, I, obviously I think it's wrong as well. If anything, it creates another line in our society it's uh, another line of division you know puts some people over here some people over here some you know and it, it's just it's just terrible to have all these lines that that really i guess can confuse people um i think also that the brain takes a very long time to develop you can ask my mom that um, my brain takes a very long time to develop <laughs> really long, really long. <laughs> but i just think that um especially at the young age of you know whatever five six seven eight there's no way that you you can understand what you really want, kind of like what Becca was saying, um, and especially like all our talks about identity. It takes a long time to develop these things, hmm. and I just think it's terrible that that uh, the teachers and that and whoever is responsible is just really pushing it and driving it into the children's mind. That, hey, you know this could be you, or this could be you. How how do you know? You have to go to explore these things, and really. Children just have to go have fun, you know, go to the playground and just do whatever. Because when I was younger, far, I, like, I was just like running around the streets, like, you know, creating messes and stuff and burning letterboxes and whatever. And, like, that's what I was, <laughs> oh, just, oh, just oh, fun, how man. interesting. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would never do such a thing. Yeah. It's going to be a jandal cracking your head, like, any second now. <laughs> but yeah, I just really think that, you know, kids shouldn't be deciding these things now. They should be out having fun, you know, going mm -hmm. to the waterfall and stuff like that. You know, just just really enjoying their, their child ages. Uh, because before they know it, they're already teenagers and, and they're already adults and then they're already 40, 50. Does that make you bigoted towards the LGBTQIA plus community? Because because you're saying you know hey man leave kids alone let them go out have some fun all that sort of play okay but does that actually make you inherently bigoted and should you or should then let me let me put it out here a little bit more and i want to hear from both of you i'm going to have a chat with liao but i want to hear from both of you because it sounds like you want to go out to play and you're talking about division as well okay the Big push at the moment, of course, is that males who are identifying as females, including in school, are able to play in the girls' sports, in the female sports, whether it's soccer, mm -hmm. cycling, weightlifting, boxing, whatever have you. So, is that is that okay? Is that quite inclusive? Are you okay with biological males stepping into... Uh, female sports areas because they identify as female. Oh, that's that's definitely a tough one because I myself I don't agree with that. I think that biological men have a much higher uh, their bodies are built for endurance and strength much more than a woman's body, so they're automatically going to have like such a big advantage, and then. You know, think about those poor girls. They're like, oh no, like blah blah blah. It's like so much faster than me, or, you know, and they can't do anything about it just because if they said something, oh no, like they're not allowed. You know what I mean? Like they're not allowed to say these things. And I just think it's unfair for these uh, kids. Yeah, I just, yep. I just yep. think it's fair enough. A bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rebecca, what are your thoughts? Now, I I also want to note because of the fact that. Look, it's quite interesting, but you know, all the three of the three of you guys here are Samoan, and what was interesting was in the Pan Pacific Samoan Games. Of course, you had Laurel Hubbard, who used to be Gavin Hubbard, and basically he went to the Samoa, and it was in Samoa, and he he was weightlifting against girls, females, and he 
obliterated them. He broke hardcore records, and both of those females had to sit on second and third, watching a biological man actually take over the female sports. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's inclusive? What are your thoughts about that whole element? Yeah, that's a. It is definitely a tough question. Um, but no, I mean, I don't agree with it either. I, I don't think that it is fair because, just as Shasta said, men are built differently and they are built to be stronger and fitter and endurance, you know, and all that. So I don't think it is uh, fair for the men to be playing in the women's sports. And if that's the fact, then I don't think it should be fair that women play in the men's sports either because you have to be, you have to be. Um, uh, fair to everybody and if you're not going to let that you can't let you know one or the other and um yeah so it, it's a tough question but i mean that's my personal opinion i, I don't think it's right mm, awesome awesome liao your thoughts what do you think about this situation the five-year-olds onwards and also the idea about biological males now in female sports <laughs> Um, so I was just thinking about our five to 12 year olds and I feel like it's the breakdown of families that um, these children don't have a sense of belonging and so they they will take on whatever is given to them at school they listen to their teachers the sense of um, a foundation or something that, that allows them to be grounded um, will give them a, a better set of, you know, when they're being pressured at school, that they actually feel like they belong to, you know, belong to a bigger group or belong to the, their parents are able to um, guide them because for the last 20 odd years that, that responsibility of parents have slowly dwindled to us not even having that responsibility where uh, things are set at school and you have to go with them where the kids are able to change their names or now we've got the birth certificates that we have to deal with where you can have um, you can change the gender you know allegedly so I mean that that came up as well so we've we've got a whole lot of issues that our young people are having to face and um, this is why this group is so incredibly important is that we've still got a generation that is really grounded and we've got um, Shasta and his brothers, Rebecca and Hannah, you know, they, they've got a really good foundation, which they came from. And so they are able to go, hey, we can help support you. We can help be there for you. Um, as for the the gender with um, Laurel Hubbard and Samoa, I, I honestly was absolutely disgusted that these two amazing women who have practiced their whole lives were not able to go to the Olympics, they missed out because uh, Laura Hubbard um, took that, you know, and, and in fact, New Zealand was, you know, going to the Olympics uh, as a transgender athlete. What about all the other women who are obviously weaker? How do we deal with this kind of thing? Why are we going to allow this to happen in our schools? You know, we're talking about weightlifting here, but what happens when there's wrestling? What happens when there's this sport that there's actual contact uh, with um, weaker? Obviously, us females are, are made weaker. Uh, what happens when when that happens? What kind of injury will that cause? You know, these are these are these are questions that need to be asked because right now it's, it's a, a sport that you do on your own. But what happens when we start doing? What happens when that starts happening? Yep, absolutely. Well said. Well said, and I, I would even perhaps even go, I'd even go a little bit further and say that, let's say that the the males continue because they have been ripping and just rotting the records left and right of female sports. And my thing is, what happens when the world finally wakes up to itself and goes, okay, stop, protect female sports and let males have males and let female have female sports again? Because the only two things that I can see coming out of this is either you go back and you return back to to protecting both and keeping the female sports and the male sports separate, or throw it all out and then just go sports-wise. 
male female doesn't matter and i think we all know what will happen then because it's happening right now is that your high level male sports will just utterly rip everything else to pieces it is for example like having lebron james basically go to the women's nba the wnba you know and i think that uh, who was it dave chappelle had a humorous idea of that that he'll just score nearly 900 points a game you know just absolutely crazy juice here's what my concern is if you have males in female sports and they are ripping it up they are changing all the records and we finally realize the truth of this and actually go back and protect women's sports again what happens to the records that the males have put in place because at the moment if you've got a male setting the records then women just are not going to be able to match them and that mm -hmm. happened in i believe it's cycling it's already happened in some of the, the basketball and the soccer that they've got going on i believe even over in australia they had a, a boys go a boys netball team go into a women's tournament and they ripped up all the records there as well what happens to the records that the males have set because at the moment they need to they'll probably be left alone uh, which means women are in a, in a innate an innate disadvantage um Catherine Shirley has brought up a really great point. Creator train sports. Yeah, creator train sports. No problem. No problem at all. Absolutely fine. Not a problem. Uh, you know, uh, Savage Nobles has brought up politician's son, Gavin, Gavin Hubbard, didn't even get bronze at the Tokyo Olympics. And he's absolutely right. And this is where you have to actually realize that when Gavin Hubbard did go to the Tokyo Olympics, he just, as Liao has also said, he took the spot of a woman who was working really hard to get there and because he because gavin laurel hubbard was already going at a trying to go at a peak performance he is older and he injured himself yet again all right so we ruined our chance while he ruined the chance of another woman to actually step in there uh it, you know look, i'll be honest i'm going to add to it i find it grimly humorous that vogue magazine actually gave the best woman of the year award to a male who was uh, caitlin jenner you know so you had that one and not only that i believe it was last year or the year before in the new zealand beauty pageants it was actually a male who won the intercontinental award so that's a you know <laughs> i think it's i think it's incredibly dangerous and you know i i think it is quite simple i think it's absolutely wrong um and especially for our kids just to be saved it's just incredibly important anyway so that's where we sort of stand out now with the kids i just wanted to ask uh, because I, I do have a couple more questions asked but i wanted to also point out to give you guys a chance uh, because i'm saying this here's my thing i think that gender ideology is going to ruin children i think that critical race theory in new zealand which is called te hurihanga nui and it's been done from early childhood to the end of secondary is going to ruin children all right and i think also a bit of climate alarmism and a uh, just a growth of this microaggression triggering sort of stuff where basically young people are kept at this heightened alert where they're just scared of everything are you seeing what or what patterns trends are you seeing that you're worried about in young people what are you seeing in terms of communications whether it's through you know obviously like TikTok or what you're seeing on screen what are you guys seeing that's causing you some concern within the young people environment today rebecca what do you think yeah it, there's definitely less um kids aren't as social as uh, they used to be back i mean when i was young i was definitely all around very social people constantly and um, I even grew up, I, I was homeschooled, so it's kind of um, strange for homeschoolers to be very social. But um, I was very social back then. But um, <laughs> And with TikTok and Instagram and everything going on now, I think it's even, it's making it even harder for kids to be social now because they're always on their phones. They're always looking at this and that. And it's just like they, they want to be more like this and they feel like they can't be social if they're not looking the certain way or if they're not feeling a certain way and it is quite difficult um for them to feel included uh, in these days yeah mm, yeah well said well said chester what are your thoughts um so kind of carry on from what becca said um so i think it was the other day i read this article where uh the kids of today they're at a significant disadvantage because 
back in the day when um when you're by yourself you have a lot of time to think you have a lot of time to develop your ideas your identity you, you know just like in the car on the way home you're just like staring at staring at the bugs or like the the water rolling down the window you know and you're just you're just thinking to yourself you know before you go to bed you're just thinking wow what how was my day today you know that kind of thing because before phones and then now you don't really have much time to think you know there's, mm. media, there's instagram you know you see what your friends are up to Best side of them all the time. And things that kind of just take away your time to just fill out and think, you know. Mm. But now I think it's it's quite difficult because all these distractions are there just to distract you from answering the the, the main questions about yourself. You know what what do you like doing? Um, there are all these questions that people used to ask themselves all the time. At least from from my understanding, what, what article saying, and I just think it's it's just real tough on on these kids that they're not able to ask these questions because they're so distracted, and they always see what they always see the best side of their their friends. You know, on Instagram, you never show like double chin, you're drinking coffee, like you you never show those sides. You only show like when you're at the beach, you're having a mean time, and like being a kid, you're just like. They're, they're having fun. They're like, you know, they're so happy all the time. And then there's me. Yeah. And it's tough that, yeah. that these kids go through this, which I think is a real struggle. Yeah, well said. Oh, yeah. Well said. <clears throat> Leo, what about you? What are you seeing in terms of the observations that you've made of the young community? Um, I feel like they are, uh, because of um, technology and uh, they they feel like they're a part of a community, but they're actually really isolated. And so when they come out, you know, when they leave their phone, they don't actually have any friends around them. You know, it's all online or, you know, so this is where I think there's a huge gap. Um, why they are actually so into sport, why they're into is because there isn't any other way to interact with people now. We, you know, we used to just go down the, to the park and meet people and, and we had this whole sort of 10 years of, don't talk to strangers, don't do this, don't do that. And, and what it's become is our, our fences have gotten higher. We don't talk to anybody. And what this pandemic has done is that we are actually starting to talk again, where, you know, things are starting to come down, where we're actually, we're not in a good place and we do need each other. So I, I see this as a, a huge opportunity um, to reconnect again you know, to put down your phones, to start to actually, you know, your parents, if you're out there listening, you know, it's time to take that phone away for a while so you can communicate with each other and actually have this kind of, um, you know, this is the moment, this, this is our time where we actually are using this, uh, whatever, whatever this looks like this year, to actually reconnect with each other and to, mm. uh, you know, say hello to a stranger. <laughs> You know, so for so long, we we're like, don't talk to any strangers. But actually, most people, you know, the average Kiwi, uh, are really good to talk to. Hmm. Nice one. Nice one. Well said. Uh, of course, you know, we do know that traditionally, uh, Greens and Labour actually have young people voting for them. Right. I'm aware that, you know, basically that if you're young, you're supposed to vote for Greens and Labour. Uh, what about you guys? Do you support Greens and Labour, the Labour Party? We know that traditionally young people don't really vote much at all anyway, but when they do, they, they are supposed to. They are supposed to vote for Greens and Labour. Do you think they are good, you know, ah, woo What are your thoughts on, in terms of the political stuff? You know, we, we do discuss politics, so so I do want to ask you, you guys about that sort of stuff. I'll be honest, man, that was the last thing on my mind when I was your age. <laughs> but what, do you, what are your thoughts there? Shasta? What are your thoughts? Labour, Greens, awesome, sick years? Nah, stink. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, pretty much I think it's um, it's almost like mandatory to vote for either Labour or Green if you're around my age. Like, Especially when I was in uni, that's like all people talked about. They're like, oh yeah, vote Labour, vote Green. Like, first vote Labour, second vote Green, that kind of thing. But I really think that... um. 
it's kind of like people just they don't really know you know what i mean they're they're just kind of feeding off what other people say especially too you'll find that's a real big thing is that people kind of just follow the crowd and no one really wants to stand up and say no don't vote for them and like, what no, they don't. no one really wants to stand up and just be like that so i think it's definitely a real big real big thing just to kind of follow your mate like, oh sure, bro. that means we can get free weed bro no let's go <laughs> the weed the weed yeah, that's that's just what people decide you know? come from the bandwagon and they're like oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, let's do it. Yeah, Rather than actually kind of doing the research themselves and like figuring out, is this what I really want? Is this not what I want? What what do I stand for as a person? What are my values? Will this party help help me achieve these values for the the rest of New Zealand? Yes or no? Like no one really wants to like answer those questions for themselves, so they kind of just like hang out with their mates and like, oh, you we'll just we'll do that. Sure, sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. That sounds good. Rebecca, what about you? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, um, I mean, I don't agree with them. <laughs> I, I would never vote for them. I never have voted for them. <laughs> I remember when I was um, 18, I could start voting. I was like, oh, yep, here we go. National Party, Conservative Party. <laughs> and then I would tell my friends, I'd be like, oh, I voted for National and Conservative. They're like, what is up with you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, oh, well, you know, I just believe in their morals and stuff. But yeah, um, they're just... I mean, they're kind of corrupt, to be honest, in my eyes. <laughs> I just, uh, I mean, people don't, young people don't do their research these days. And that's the problem is that they are peer pressured or just told or they just listen to what everybody else around them is saying. And so many young people, that's what they're saying now. Let's, let's go for Labour because they're going to give us this. They're going to give us this. And, you know, we're free if we go with them. But no, that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well said. Well said. Leah, what are your thoughts there, eh? How, how about Labour? Labour's doing a pretty good job, surely. Hey, what are the Greens, <laughs> eh? You got green, you got a green scarf on, eh? Come on now. Oh, you got the roster dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, guys, thank you. Um, I, I think Labour um, is, uh, their promise is as empty as our banks right now. It's actually true. There, <laughs> lots of promises and deliver nothing. Um, yeah, I mean, this is something traditionally. Uh, my father voted for Labour his whole life because they they did they they delivered at that time when we needed them, and so he he carried that on. And then uh, when when I started voting, I'm like. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure about this, you know, and just uh, even young, I just went, hmm, not sure. Um, so I, I, I did start thinking differently uh, as I got older and started to see that actually a lot of them are just there for prestige. They have, um, they promise a lot of things and sometimes they deliver and sometimes they don't. And so it's been very disappointing um uh, this this past two elections to see um this continue uh, continually everything going downhill you know uh we've been in lockdown as soon as auckland was about you know we were able to go out you know to actually leave auckland uh the petrol prices are nearly three dollars each you know so these are all these little things that are starting to build up and go actually you're not helping us at all <laughs> you're not helping us at all in fact we're, we're going the other direction right now yeah yep no, well said, well said. I, for Can myself, I I'd probably, me? yeah, go for it. Um, so um, with our with our teenagers, there's one thing that really I, I feel like it's starting to create a little shift in mindset. Is um, you know, the whole two shots for shot, or two shots for summer, you know, that thing, so they can oh, go yep, to the yep, festivals yep. and that. And then suddenly, all the festivals are being cancelled. They don't want to like the hype up. Oh, let's go do it, let's go do it. Like the festivals have been cancelled. And also, summer's been brought to a real fast end because of the, the red light thing, you know. It's only been like a three-week summer. So, like, a lot of teenagers feel like they've been ripped off. And, oh, man, I'm gutted. I hate this party. Blah, 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 blah. You know, so, so hopefully. Yeah. Oy. yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> and let's not remember that there's only two countries in the world that actually have the traffic light system, which happens to be New Zealand and China. I find that quite uh, fascinating in itself. <laughs> right. Really? Um, I, would, yep, I, I absolutely would agree with, with everything that you guys have said. I said in 2020 that this current government was the worst government that we've ever had in the history of New Zealand. 
going back to 1852 constitutional days and nothing i've seen has changed my mind on that in fact i i think it's even worse you know the question of whether we're even going to have an election is now being raised in more quarters so i think that you're absolutely right this is the most the incredibly the most horrific brutal cruel government that we have ever had including Muldoon by far there's nothing worse yeah. than this current government so it's quite interesting as well now I did want to probably do a little bit of a finish off on something and that is right you guys are talking it sounds like you know you're opposed to gender ideology being pushed onto children you're sort of saying that that we should not be going for Labour Greens you're actually sounding quite conservative based so I'm curious where is this coming from what are your world views and and i guess i'm just i'm looking a little bit deeper what are your values uh, so that we sort of know sort of where the other the articulations of those values come from so rebecca let's start with you uh, you know what are what is your value system where do you yeah i guess what is your world view what is your what what's at the heart and the core of rebecca yeah well i grew up a christian i've um, believed in the bible my entire life and um it's you know it's those values of you've got a choice but it's also do what is right or wrong and there's just um there's a fine line between them and um i think everybody has a choice to do whatever they want to do you know but i do not agree with people pushing anything on anybody because god never pushed anything on us you know what who are we to tell people what to be or what to do and so it's like you know my views come from the bible and from god and from my family and from what i was raised in so that's i mean that's just what i believe i believe in choice i believe in freedom i'm i'm not one to judge i'm not one to tell anybody what to do but you know we should never i mean i don't like that anybody else can tell anybody else what to do either you know they shouldn't be able to tell what you want to be what you want to do in life it's your own choice and but when you are younger it's you know you're still growing you still gotta listen to your parents you still gotta listen you know and all that but yeah so my views come from god the bible my family <laughs> oh well said well said love it shasta yeah so i'm i'm pretty much in the same boat as Becca, so I was raised in a Christian and um, through, through that, you know, I've been instilled a lot of values that, like, you know, they they act as a like, real good foundation for, for someone's life. And the thing is that I'm all for, like, people making their own decisions. You know, you can do whatever you want. I, I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I know that deep in my heart that these values and these, you know, these core values act as, like, a foundation for my life. Um, I also think that nowadays, I'm not too sure if, if you guys have uh, seen it, but they're trying to really rip the masculinity out of men. So um, I was raised with uh, two other brothers, so we have quite a masculine household, you know. And I just think it's very important that, like, especially males and men, they're the people they feel strong. You know, they're, they're the forefront of the family. And I just think we should definitely be you know, keeping that up because at the moment, you know, um, especially what, like what, what Becca was saying is even um, kids, they're at the age where they, they look up to their parents and, you know, they listen to their parents and it shouldn't be like all these decisions shouldn't be put on them. You know what I mean? And, it's, and the thing is, it's starting like you, you start your, your life at a young age, obviously. And as you grow up, you learn different things. Um, so I definitely think that, uh, yeah, you guys get what I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> yeah, few, 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 few. <laughs> right, Liao, I'll have to sort of, uh, uh, what about yourself? I mean, yeah, you've raised your boys with biblical values and, and strength. What are your, in terms of your own worldview, where does your worldview come from? Yeah, so I, I had um, some uh, very godly people in my life, um, even though my upbringing was uh, very difficult. Um, I lost my mother at a very young age. And so there were there are a lot of things that, that can really spin you out of control. But these two very foundational people in my life were able to ground me and um, tell me how much God loves me. 
and he cares for me. So uh, using that as my foundation, um, I grew up uh, wanting that for myself, uh, for my husband, and especially for my children. And I, I for my philosophy is that we, we only have one life. We only have one life to live, and so we need to live it well. And um, we, we, I've come from a place where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if, you, you, if there's anything that young people need is the way, a direction, a purpose. As one thing that, the, that young people want is a uh, need is the truth. I am the truth. And there's one thing that young people need is life. Um, and he said he came to give life and life more abundant. Um, we, we're meant to then they're meant to live and uh, well and to live in this not in fear you know constantly fear is coming from every direction and as I said this morning in one of my posts is that fear comes in all shapes and sizes and um we we need to know what is fear and and when you're in a, a place that is that you're grounded in then um fear doesn't become part of your life you know and so that's how I've wanted to bring up my children my boys uh, to be mighty men of valor, yeah. Hmm. Oh, very nice. Oh, well done, well done. Great thoughts all. I, I guess for myself, yes, I am also a Christian. My my path was a bit rocky. Grew up in multiple broken homes. I ended up quite basically doing a whole lot of dumb stuff. Smoking weed, selling weed, smoking other stuff, selling other stuff. Uh, and basically had a few scams on the side as well. Uh, got saved in my 20s and yeah, been awesome journey ever since. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that, and especially when you think about the pillars of New Zealand, that idea of, of not just New Zealand, but of Western culture itself, of being ancient Greek democracy and the Christian uh, ethics, values, morals, and that all of our laws and all of the systems that we have in place actually come from that, that biblical document. So I, I think that it has worked in our favor. The Western culture is unbeatable. It has been better, more productive. It has been able to self-correct more than any other culture in the history of mankind. So I, I absolutely agree. I think that uh, you know, Christianity is pretty much the boss, <laughs> which is good. Look, it's, it's 57 minutes. Got a few minutes left. I want to just give you guys just a last a little bit of a, a last word to you guys so that anything that you want to say to the people out there... Uh, I want you to go for it. So, uh, Leo, I'm going to start with you. Then we'll go to Shasta, and we'll, then we'll finish off with Rebecca. Yeah, actually, I was thinking, ah, which hat was I wearing today? <laughs> now I feel like I've been interviewed. <laughs> You're good like that, Elliot. Thank you very oh, oh, much. There we go. There we go. Uh, my famous last words. <laughs> um, I, I just, I, I just want people to live life. Eh? I really want you to live your life well and um I, for, for our young people like we will do whatever it is to help support you during this time it's very very difficult time but 2022 can be a year that you could really you know get into and enjoy and meet new people uh do things that you haven't done before uh, within the law um and you know <laughs> this <laughs> this is to our young people i'm talking to you um, yeah, it's Elliot. especially <laughs> Elliot. Do you, do you Hey, what um, the? Um, <laughs> bless you There's guys. Nothing he hasn't done here, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, 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 you guys. All right, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> awesome, yeah. awesome, Chester. Yeah, as our final words, I just want to say uh, thank you to everyone that has tuned in for this video. Um, yeah, like what my mom said, I just think it's really important for you to stand strong this year. Like, you never know what kind of uh, battles that you're going to be facing this year. And uh, definitely, if you if you stand strong and you you work hard, then you're going to be a, like a light, like a role model to other people that are struggling a little bit. And I think it's um, very important for them as well to be able to see someone that's um, powering through these things. So you guys got this, and definitely, and yeah, keep it up. Awesome, awesome, Rebecca. Yep, just carrying on with uh, what they said. Um, yeah, just keep on going and keep on um, figuring out life this year because um, what God has been telling me for this year is it's a blank canvas. You're going to start clean and you're going to start a new chapter of your life and I'm going to take you through new experiences. So it'll be awesome to see um, you guys uh, going through experiences and learning who you are and who you want to be and what you want to do. So get out there, have new, make new friends, um, new experiences and everything, as Leah said, inside the law. 
And um, yeah, <laughs> keep on doing, keep on being you. <laughs> Oh, why do I, hey, hey, far out, hey, eh? now we're just getting beaten up now, wow, <laughs> all right, so that was the Tilsley tribe, that's part of the Tilsley tribe, there's more of them, we're going to make sure that we get more interviews with these guys, seeing what they're going, this is the start of the year, exciting things happening, listen to their words, it's going to be absolutely awesome, in the meantime, from us to you, God bless you, and we'll see you on the next one, God bless you all.